Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome to my Manchester United vs Liverpool preview. It is, for my money, the biggest game of the Premier League season. Manchester United at Old Trafford doesn't get any bigger than that for the Reds. And this one is just going to be absolutely fascinating. I'm sorry this preview is a bit late. Um, I've been completely, completely, ridiculously ill. So now is my last chance to do it and I'm going to do it now. Uh, less than 24 hours before the game, I'm going to be there at Old Trafford tomorrow. Cannot wait to get up there and... I'm quite confident, you know, you, you know what you're going to get with Jose Mourinho, you know they're not exactly going to come at us and, you know, even last season we were the ones that had the impetus early on, we took the lead, we were the ones that came away disappointed with the draw and I think it's going to be us again that has all the attacking intent. Um, it's going to be fascinating tactically to see how Mourinho um, lines up against us, I think we all pretty much know how Liverpool are going to play, we'll have the 4-3-3 the three, three formation or, or, you know, it becomes a 4-4-2 at times, but we're going to be having bags of pace and Firmino up front and um, plenty of steel and quality in midfield. But United, you know, will they go for a, a Matic and a McTominay, um, as they have been recently, to, to leave Pogba there with more of a free role? Um, will they bring Fellaini back in? You know, he is available again, according to Jose Mourinho. Um, what are they going to do up front? Are they going to maybe go with a Mata? Um, he's got a bit of panache and a bit of quality. Are they going to go with the pace of Rashford? Um, Jesse Lingard's been getting some important goals for them. Apparently Martial, uh, I don't think, is available. I might be mistaken there. But um, fascinating, fascinating uh, clash. Eric Bailey's also reportedly available again. And that is going to be a relief for them. Because um, as we saw in the Palace game on Monday with Lindelof, Smalling, um, you know, Valencia and Young... It, 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 some good players there, but it just didn't look right. And I, I just watched that game and I was excited at the prospect of Mane, Salah and Firmino running at them all. So that g gives me a lot of confidence. Obviously, going to Old Trafford and uh, this very young Liverpool side and uh, a Liverpool side that you know hasn't really won any trophies, doesn't really have the know-how to go into these grounds and grind out a result necessarily. We're just going to go and out-football them. Um, not that that's a word, but yeah, I think it's very much going to be our heavy metal footballers club likes to call it versus the the nous and the, the the pragmatism of Jose Mourinho and it's 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 a clash um, of styles that I love to see it's a fascinating one as I keep saying um, so if we look to, if we look at Liverpool's sort of eleven um, there there weren't many changes in midweek um, it wasn't a very exciting game that you know probably suits us what down to the ground for this um, plenty of energy in all of those legs. Um, you know, Salah was rested, so that's that's great. Uh, but Firmino and Mane played, and quite a lot of the other first team players played. Van Dijk was rested, but so you know, Karius in goal, um, right back. Now Trent played well here last season, so I see no reason why he shouldn't keep his place um, as far as the lead team is concerned and play here again. I would play Dejan Lovren alongside uh, Virgil van Dijk. Lovren seems to play well against uh, Romelu Lukaku every time I've seen him uh, play against him, so hopefully that's the case again on Saturday. Robertson, of course, at left back. The midfield, as it is always the case, you know, there's six midfielders there. We could pick absolutely any of them. Um, my instinct would tell me we'll, we'll keep it quite tight, you know, we'll keep it quite solid and maybe look look at Henderson, Chan van Aldem trio um, as. as as exciting as that isn't, um, I'd be more than happy to see us go two of them and then Oxley Chamberlain. Uh, that that would that, be my preference, but I think we'll probably stick with you know a solid three who can get forward and can drive forward and play play the play the killer passes, but you know also has that defensive solidity and strength. Um, you know we saw Van Aldem have a great game against Man City in January. Uh, we know what Emery Chan can do in these big games. Jordan Henderson, obviously the captain, um, you know is as good as he's in these occasions as anyone else. And then the front three of Mane, Salah, Firmino. So it's a fascinating one, and I, I do have confidence. And, and it's an interesting dynamic in terms of what the fixture actually means because I think you'd be surprised if either of these sides finished outside the top four, especially with Arsenal being miles away, Chelsea being the other side outside the top four, and they're not exactly firing in all cylinders. They've also still got the Champions League, just like us. I think we're seven points ahead of them, and we have to go to the bridge. Um, obviously, if we lose here and lose at the bridge, then you know suddenly it's one point. But um, the significance of a victory here is far goes far deeper than just league position for me. It's... It's all about where we are, who are Man City's biggest contenders, not just now, but in years to come. Uh, I think if we can go to Old Trafford and get a win, um, outplay them, outthink them, um, outpace them, I think there's so much quality in this side, so many attributes in this Liverpool side that they don't have. Yes, they've got um, 
they've got their qualities that we don't. You know that Mourinho, as a manager, has got qualities that Klopp doesn't. You know his, his record in final speaks for itself. Whereas Klopp, you know, plays a bit more on emotion um, and you know has more trust in his players. Mourinho is a bit more ruthless and, um, as I keep saying, pragmatic. So it's just a fascinating clash. I think it's. I think it is. Some a lot of people will say it's going to be nil nil like it was at Anfield and. I just don't think that'll be the case this time. I just have a feeling there's going to be goals. I, I just cannot see us not scoring. United have to come out with us as the cliche goes, but they do have to come and play um, to a certain degree. I, I'm sure, you know, I know United fans do like Mourinho because he's a successful manager and he's got that bit of needle that, that, they, that they thrive on, but he's got to come and try and beat Liverpool here. He's got to try and do it. And, any any space that comes available to us, we're going to exploit, um, which is why I want to see Oxlade Chamberlain in there, getting in between the lines and making those driving runs, feeding the uh, three ahead of him. But yeah, this, this, the, t- it's, the time for talking is almost over. It's Manchester United versus Liverpool. Um, it's my favourite game of the season, you know, in, in some ways. It's my least favourite in other ways. I don't normally do this, but I've seen a lot of combined 11s going around, everyone arguing about it, um, so I thought I'd throw mine in as well. Um, it's not going to be too controversial, but um, let's do it. So De Gea and goal. Um, Valencia right back. Um, he's just got a good quality going forward. He's a, he's a good solid right back. Um, central defence, Van Dijk obviously. Um, as much as United fans will try to say that he's a waste of money and um, Smalling's better, I saw someone say. Uh, you know, that's just I think that's just uh, a bit of digging there. Uh, and Derek Bailey, great, great defender. Left back, Robertson. You know, United haven't really got a quality left back. Probably somewhere they'll look to strengthen in the summer. Uh, the midfield, now, neither midfield is as good as it, you know, has been in years gone by. Um, you'd have to kind of probably pick Nemanja Matic. He's almost a complete midfielder. Um, he, he can be exposed, but I think he's had a good season for United. And obviously in the season when Chelsea did win the league, he was very, very effective. He's quite, you know, obviously breaking up play and he has got a great shot on him as well. We saw on Monday. Um, Pogba, uh, not a consistent player, but, you know, in terms of natural, raw quality, he is as good as it gets in central midfield. And do you know what? I'm going to pick Oxlade Chamberlain as, as the other one. You know, people might laugh at that, but I think he's been terrific for the Reds since he's come in. He was he took a while to bed in, but um, you know, I, I'm very enthusiastic about him, and I think he is. He's arguably our best midfielder this season. You know, um, with Cater to come in next year, you know, you, you can only be excited at the prospect of those two playing together uh, in a diamond with a number six behind them, whoever that number six may be. Uh, three players left, and you've got a lot of quality to choose from. Um, I find it hard not to pick Alexis Sanchez. I just think, you know, we haven't seen it at United yet, but at Arsenal he was, we just knew he was going to win in the game if ever they were in trouble. Uh, Mohamed Salah, obviously best player in the league. And Firmino up front. Uh, Bobby Firmino is one of the most complete strikers in Europe, so that's a no-brainer. Um, so that's my command 11. My prediction for Saturday, I'm just, I'm just, I'm confident. I, I, I don't know why, I probably shouldn't be, I shouldn't be... Th- Picking us to win at Old Trafford, but the bookies can't separate us. I think they're six to four, we're seven to four. Um, I'm just going to pick us to go there and win it. I'm going to go uh, two one to the Reds. Why not? I, th- I think we've progressed so much since last season. I don't think they have. I know they're much better in the league, but um, I just think we're going to go there and do the business. I really do. Um, that may come back to bite me, but that's why we're fans. That's why we're fans. Uh, Mohamed Salah to score both the goals because. Uh, there's nothing I'd rather see, quite frankly. Um, so leave a comment with your predictions, leave a comment with your thoughts ahead of this game and your combined 11s and your Liverpool starting 11s, whatever you want to let me know. I obviously reply to all of you as I do every single video uh, whenever I get around to it. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Subscribe if you're new and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook for more. See you next time. Up the Reds.